Trump has accused Moon of seeking appeasement with North Korea, though the South Korean leader has tilted more in Washington's direction in recent weeks, fully deploying a controversial U.S. missile defense system and saying the time is not now right for dialogue. He is in a now-in situation, just like his predecessors, said Kim Hyunga, an expert on Korean politics at Australian National University. No matter what they say, when U.S. pressure gets really serious, then there is very little they can do but whatever the U.S. wants. Policy shift during the campaign, Moon advocated for greater diplomacy to end the North Korea crisis and called for greater economic ties between the two Koreas. His stance was compared to the so-called sunshine policy of the liberal governments of 1998 to 2008. By no coincidence, he was a key advisor to those administrations. Under the Sunshine Policy, Seoul actively engaged Pyongyang, which led to closer relations on both sides of the border and saw two South Korean presidents visit the North Korean capital. However, the approach ultimately failed to halt North Korea's nuclear weapons program. In office, Moon's administration froze deployment of the THA-80 missile defense system, a move that has now been reversed, and reached out to Pyongyang to set up talks between the two countries, but that olive branch was rebuffed. Moon chung -in, a senior advisor to President Moon, said the pressure from both Pyongyang and Washington has altered thinking from the Blue House. President Moon was against the deployment of THAAD, he told CNN this month. At the same time, he was a strong proponent of dialogue and negotiation with North Korea. But, North Korea has continued to show unruly behavior and provocation. By attempting to walk a line between Washington's hardline approach and his previous pro-dialogue angle, Moon may be doomed to lose twice over, according to academics Marcus Bell and Marco Milani. Moon's do-attract policy of seeking North Korea's denuclearization while also calling for dialogue, is preventing gains on either, they wrote last month. Nor is there any indication that Pyongyang is willing to meet Moon close to halfway, according to Yonsei University professor John Deluri. For Kim Jong-un and the North Korean system, a friendly liberal South Korean government is more threatening than a hostile conservative one, he said. The Moon government offered a few trial balloons, but Pyongyang has popped them one by one. Strong support for now a long-time activist and advisor to the liberal Roh Moo-hyun administration, which ran South Korea from 2003 to 2008, Moon is an experienced politician, used to walking the delicate balancing act of the country's coalition politics. While North Korea may have dominated headlines abroad throughout the campaign and his early presidency, Moon ran largely on economic and anti-corruption policies, promising to reform the country's politics and chables, the huge family and conglomerates that dominate the country's economy. According to a regular Gallup Korea poll, Moon's approval rating remains high, at over 70 percent. He has also benefited that increased pressure from North Korea is seeing public opinion, trending towards the more conservative approach Moon appears to be adopting. But that popularity belies a degree of weakness in the president's position, said Anus Kim. Moon was buoyed by the candlelight revolution of centrists and progressives, named for the mass protests which helped drive Park from office, but his ruling Democratic Party only holds 40 percent of the seats in the National Assembly, and is dependent on support from smaller parties, in particular the centrist People's Party. Any drop in popularity could see increased opposition in the Assembly, according to Kim. How forgiving the Korean public will be is entirely up to how quickly Moon can perform and improve Korea's economic conditions, she said. She pointed to gubernatorial votes in June as a key test of Moon's administration if he does and get a majority from those elections, the rest of his term will be pretty rough. CNN's Pamela Boykoff, Paula Hancock's, Taehoon Lee, and KJ Kwan contributed reporting.